church is not a place we go. The church is who we are, the body of the living Christ. We are those who have been inverted, the broken and spiritually disoriented, who have now been turned right side up, reconciled, justified, loved, so we can now love. We are those once self-focused, self-sick on sin, now turned outward, loving our neighbor, giving our life, our time, our talents, our treasure for their good, for God's glory. We are in version, version 2.0, 2.1, 2.3, people in process, being sanctified, changed, the broken being made new. Our mission is to make gospel-centered disciples for the glory of God. I never imagined I'd live in California, and I certainly never imagined I'd be a pastor in California. I was born and raised in Colorado where the Front Range meets the Rocky Mountains, and I was born into a Christian home, a blue-collar family. I grew up knowing how to play the church game, be the good boy, pace on the smile, get the good grades, say the right thing, avoid the vices that would make me look bad. But I was sick. I was sick on self. I was a self-righteous hypocrite who manipulated others into thinking I was nicer, better, cleaner than I really was. I used God to gain the good opinions of people and people to make me feel like a God. Then in 2007, two weeks, the end of April, the beginning of May, God broke into my broken stone heart and made it flesh, made it feel His love. The rescue mission of the gospel found me. He saved me from myself. I experienced my sin, my brokenness of being, and I experienced His grace like warmth pouring into me. He set me aside for ministry and I knew I was to do one thing, preach Jesus. In February of 2010, a small group of us began Inversion, meeting on Sunday nights to study the scripture and pray together. God has graced us and has grown us in breadth and in depth. Inversion is a community of a global church on a local mission. It's a community that exists to make gospel-centered disciples for the glory of God. We're a body of believers located here in the heart of the Tri-Valley in the East Bay area of Northern California. This is an affluent area. The, the greater community is like its namesake. Pleasant on the surface. It's beautiful, well-kept, but underneath there are torrents of anxiety, depression, anger, hurt, abuse. A self-centric spirituality that drives us to prove ourselves at the cost of destroying our own lives as well as the lives of those around us. This valley is desperate. Desperate need of peace. It is in desperate need of the gospel. We gather on Sunday nights to hear the good news of who Jesus is and what he has done for us, to learn and be challenged, to look at our great hope and to be sent out each week on mission into our city and neighborhoods. On Sundays we worship through music, conversation, hospitality, generosity, studying the scripture and taking communion together each week. We are quickly outgrowing our meeting space as the word has been spreading and a vibrant social life is developing and we are learning there is something far more fulfilling than our selfish and individualistic ways. Sundays are just a piece of this community life. We are also meeting together in smaller groups throughout the Tri-Valley the rest of the week. These groups are for community, living life together, communion with God through studying the Word, confessing and praying with others, and communicating the Gospel to our neighbors in both word and deed. These groups are called Calm Groups. Calm groups are the nerves and muscles of our mission. Just as the nerves in our bodies sense and perceive information, gathering in smaller, more intimate groups puts us in touch with and gives us a sense for those in our community. And as our muscles are the engine that propels our bodies forward, so too calm groups are the engine that inversion uses to break into the community God has called us to. 
This is vital to our spiritual growth and effectiveness in reaching the lost and seeing lives transformed through the power of the gospel. The Westminster Catechism reminds us that the chief end of man is to glorify God and enjoy Him forever. At Inversion, the purpose of our comm groups is to do the same. Our identity in Christ was meant to be lived in community. As we gather together sharing our lives and struggles with the Word of God at center, we can give and gain encouragement to trust in God's promises. We can urge one another to walk in a manner worthy of the calling we have received. And we can grow in our love and understanding of Christ and of His finished work on the cross. Discipleship is crucial to inversion. In fact, the very mission of inversion is to make gospel-centered disciples, to transform lives for the glory of God. In other words, if discipleship isn't happening, we are failing in our mission. So how in the world do we carry out this incredible calling that Christ has given us? The truth is that we often fail before we even start because we don't recognize that Jesus has already completed the mission on the cross. We often think of discipleship as this complex program that we need to design and implement after people are converted as if you can be a believer but not yet a disciple. Our burden at Inversion is that discipleship never moves past the gospel but begins and is sustained and ends with it. That as we hear the good news of Jesus' death and resurrection preached and we soak in a community that helps us fight daily by the power of the Holy Spirit to believe the promises of the gospel over the lives of sin, that we are freed up to behold Christ and become like Him. And as our selfish hearts are transformed into the likeness of Jesus' selfless heart, we yearn to help one another in the same fight. Here's our dangerous thesis. If Jesus is one Savior, that is an absolute claim, all-inclusive. This means that His gracious rescue, His radical claim on our life, bleeds into all of who we are and all of what we do. It means we're called to mission, to live for Him. We live for His glory and we exist to speak of His glory to the wounded and aching world. Living this way will make others either hate us or love Jesus. Living in the vitality of Jesus is viral living. It spreads like light spills out of the sun, reflects, refracts, glows and multiplies, bringing warmth and hope to others who only know what it's like to live in the shadow. In other words, a life obsessed with Jesus will lead to serving others and spreading the gospel. What's next? We keep preaching the good news of Jesus. We keep raising up disciples for His glory. We keep seeking out new ways to engage the community we live in. We have a vision to create a missional outpost, a place where we can interact with the culture and give back to the local community. We keep praying that God grows us in breadth and in depth. We stay faithful to the gospel. We partner with you and others in the gospel. Will you join us?